I'm Danny, that witch next door. And you're listening to That Witch Podcast. Well, 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 hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to another episode here at That Witch Podcast. I'm Danny. I'm That Witch Next Door. I'm going to be your host, your guide, your mentor and instructor in all things magic, witchcraft, astrology, and witchy business. And we got a spicy one on deck today. (laughs) Uh, Not going to lie, got a hot take today. We are going to, I actually want to try and do this every sun season. I'm going to try each solar season and do an episode all about the strengths of that zodiac sign that we are, uh, that the sun is in at that current time, which right now is Aries. And we are in Aries. Okay. We got, we still have two full weeks left in Aries season. So we are in the, in the middle of Aries energy. And I really want to use these episodes to talk about the strengths and the gifts of that sign and how to use them and and really harness these energies for self-development, growth, and empowerment. So let's fucking do it. Um, So like I said, right now we are in Aries season. If you're you're listening to this on release date, hi, happy Tuesday, April 5th. And... The sun, depending on, you know, when you are hearing this, the sun should be roughly around, oh, I don't know, 15, 14 or so degrees of Aries. So Aries, Aries, Aries the ram. Aries the ram says, I am. And that means that as the very first sign in the astrological wheel, Aries is the first step, the first beginning of self, okay? And this energy is highly associated with the term ego, which we're definitely going to talk about today. And Aries is really, really associated with confidence individuality, authority, assertiveness, and confrontation, right? Because Aries was God of war, this warrior energy. So during this time, during just in general, just Aries season and, and the, and the strengths of, of Aries energy in general, this is where we give ourselves fucking permission. You know what I mean? Like this is where we give ourselves permission to say what needs to be said, to stand the ground that needs to be stood, to make that call or take that risk that maybe a lot of people around you are are shaking their head or hesitant or even scared or, or flat out telling you, no, don't do it. And there's just something in you and it probably feels a little hot because it's probably that fire burning of Aries. There's just something in you that knows, nope, this is for me, right? That's Aries. This energy, these themes are so fucking important. I really, really think that so much collective healing can take place when we really explore and understand and heal our Aries wounds. Because this is a sign of confrontation, like I said. That means that Aries brings, and if you were listening to especially the Aries New Moon episode, the Shadow Chats episode I did with Ashley with Starseed Shadows, you know we were talking about that rage, that anger that Aries inherently brings with it. And so often how this energy is just automatically labeled aggressive, violent, evil, bad. And we also know, however, that 
each sign brings the emotional experience, brings the intellectual, brings all of the energy, brings all of the experience that it brings with it for a reason. And therefore, every single sign, Aries included, with that anger included, there is a key for our transformation hidden somewhere in those depths, okay? And so I find that a lot, a lot, a lot of people are confused why they are struggling to heal their Aries wounds because they're actually repressing their anger or repressing in general their Aries qualities because they're labeling it bad or evil or negative because that is how society and the collective has labeled it for so, so long. No. Aries, really healthy Aries energy is confidence, is true authenticity, is individuality, it's independence, really, truly relying on yourself. If you are someone, and I know how many of you are out there because I've talked to so many of you, If there is somebody out there listening to this that really, really struggles with constantly self-sacrificing, doing everything for everyone first, putting everyone's needs before your own constantly, right? Focusing on the other instead of self, really, really finding a challenge with self-love, self-compassion, and self-care, you need to tap into and work with your Aries energy. If you in your business are really struggling with imposter syndrome, if you are really struggling with feeling like you stand out, with embracing your unique vibe and energy and look and messaging, all of it, you need to work with your Aries energy. And at the very least, I would suggest working with fire energy in general. But really, really specifically, I would go into your chart and I would take a look at where your Aries is, which house it's in or rules, any placements you have there. If you go look at your chart right now and you find yourself in a panic because you're like, Danny, Aries doesn't rule any house. It's intercepted within a house, which means it doesn't rule anything, but it's just squished inside a house. Or Danny, I have Aries, but I have no placements there. It's totally empty. That's okay. It doesn't mean you don't have Aries in general. That whole chart is a snapshot snapshot of you, which means you do have Aries. It just means that you don't necessarily have any direct uh, uh, priority lessons or themes in this particular life surrounding Aries themes. However, We absolutely are meant to activate even those empty areas of our charts as well. And so this is why you do a little research, you do a little learning about Aries, and you invoke and and incorporate that energy into your life, and you boost that Aries energy for yourself. And the next thing you know, you find yourself making that graphic for your business and fucking posting it because you wanted to, and because you see the value in it, and because if you were part of your audience, you sure as hell would love that piece of content, and you would say, it. So you're going to put it out there. That's tapping into and working with your Aries energy. Okay. It's giving yourself the fucking permission. Like I said, now this brings me to a little topic about ego that I wanted to just, just wanted to smash out a little bit, um, before our, our time is finished together. So in our modern times, especially in our modern spiritual communities, Ego has been labeled as inherently toxic and bad. How often have you heard the phrase starve the ego or kill the ego? Again, I want you to pay attention to people that, including yourself, if you're one of them, it's not your fault, just means you got some airy shadow work to do. I want you to pay attention to those folks that really feel uncomfortable, maybe even at the, even just the mention of the word ego. If that makes you flinch at all, if that makes you, oh, I don't like ego. No, Danny, I do feel like ego is bad. Then baby, you got ego stuff to do. And I would work with your sun sign and I would work with your Aries energy. 
That might, you might be an airy sun even. Ego is not inherently bad. The best, best, best explanation I ever heard about ego was on the Astrology Hub podcast with, um, it was the Cosmic Connection with Rick Levine. And Rick said, ego is the reason we get up the next day. Ego is the reason that we keep this whole show going. He said, it's the reason I keep the Rick Levine show going, basically. It's literally our will to live and survive. If you don't give a living fuck about yourself, this is a, a starved or killed ego, okay? This is why ego is not inherently bad. And actually, you will likely be struggling with projections of your own very unhealthy and neglected ego, if this is your belief. You will find that most of your shadow work actually centers around really exploring your ego and its unique experiences up until this point and where that shame and and suppression and repression has come from. And then accepting it and allowing it to be a part of you and really integrating your ego with all the other beautiful versions of your, that are housed within yourself. I want you to use Aries energy, whether it's now during Aries season or just whenever, I want you to use Aries season to give yourself permission to explore self. Okay. Just in general self. When you are struggling with that, with that overcompensation and self-sacrificing and self-deprecation and negative self-talk, I maybe even call up an Aries friend because they are wonderful hype people. (laughs) Really, all fire signs, wonderful, wonderful hype people. They're, if you need a, a just slamming pep talk, call up a fire sign. Um, But you have fire within you as well. And so this might look like uh, building a fire in your fireplace or lighting a red candle or wearing red or just studying Aries energy. And like I said, just doing some of those Aries things like telling someone no or saying yes to something new. So I hope my real intention for this particular episode is to inspire you to give a shit about yourself and maybe, maybe, just maybe, even care and and do a little something for you. So a lot of homework or frequently assigned piece of homework I've given many clients over the years that I'm going to leave you with today is what is one thing you can do each day, at least shoot for each week, still listen to how easy it is. You could do it every day. What is one thing you could do each day that is just for you and benefits absolutely no one else? It could honestly be as simple as really mindfully and intentionally pouring yourself a glass of water, sitting with it, charging it with your intention of self-love and self-nourishment and self-compassion and healthy ego, and then really mindfully consuming it and really feeling the water go down your throat and down your chest and into your stomach and really absorbing that magic. It could be that easy and simple. But what is one thing a day that you could do that benefits you and only you and no one else? Take some time, brainstorm about it. If you're in that witch school, I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. We actually talk about the episodes after I release them, and it's really, really fun. It's become one of my favorite little little parts of the neighborhood over there, little parts of the, the cleft. So, as always, I really hope that this episode offered you some solid new information, um, maybe a new way to look at the strength of Aries maybe even helped let go of any resentment you might have towards some of your Aries energy and be be proud of some of those traits and maybe lean into them a bit, giving yourself to permission to lean into them a little bit. I hope that 
this episode was able to give you whatever you uniquely needed for yourself. And as always, if you have any questions or any thoughts that came up, you can go over to thatwitchnextdoor.com slash conjure that witch and send me a quick message. I love getting messages from all my beautiful magical neighbors out there. All right, everybody. Uh, God's speed trailblazing on through Aries season here. Get ready for Friday's episode, by the way. (laughs) I may or may not be starting a new mini series again. I'm very excited. So make sure you come back here real soon. And if you want to join us in that witch school, details are in the show notes below. We would absolutely love to welcome you with open arms. Thank you so, so much for your time here today. I love and appreciate every single one of you. Stay safe, have fun, and stay magical out there. Hey, you magical human. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of That Witch Podcast. If you want to support the show, the best way to do that is to share with a friend or give a shout out on your social media. You can also leave a five-star rating and review on both Apple and Spotify. And if you can't get enough of all of our witchy, magical content here in the neighborhood, you definitely want to make sure you're subscribed to my email newsletter, That Witch Gazette. It's a really fun, really convenient, one-stop shop to stay up to date on all of the news and happenings here in our neighborhood. If you have any questions, suggestions, ideas for the show, or if you'd like to sponsor an episode, you can send me a message at thatwitchnextdoor.com slash conjurethatwitch. Thank you so much. I'll see y'all next time.